Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today, I want to show you a little bit about how I prepare for a book review. First, find a book and read it. The Barons of Behavior by Tom Perdum. Copyright 1972. This is one of the books in what I call the Apocryphal Eight. I finished reading all the A Science Fiction Specials Series 1, but there were eight books selected for it that didn't occur within the series. That's what I call the Apocryphal Eight. They were selected by Terry Carr prior to him leaving Ace Books. So now I've read the book and I'm thinking about it. Next, I go and do some research. I have some science fiction reference books behind me and in these shelves here. Primarily, I look in the Encyclopedia of Science Fiction by John Clute and Peter Nichols. Then to the internet. One place I like to go is the Internet Science Fiction Database, isfdb.org. In this database, I can find out some information about the publication and covers of the book. So I'll enter into the search engine the name of the book, The Barons of Behavior. I didn't notice it at the time, but it actually corrected its spelling to our Canadian spelling for behavior. And so it went through to the Barons of Behavior and there was only one printing. This was a British printing. I like to click on view all covers, especially if there were more listings than just one. And from 1977, this was the cover. Here I can see that this edition was printed in 1977 in February. The variant title is The Barons of Behavior Without the U. That's from 1972. The publisher is Dennis Dobson. And then I have the ISBN or catalog ID. We have a price, the number of pages, and its format. This is a hardcover format for this novel. Now I'm going to enter the name and revert back to the American spelling of the original edition. Here we can see that there are three printings. View all covers of the Barons of Behavior again. Here we can see the Ace Books first edition cover. Then it looks like perhaps a German cover. And finally, the Dennis Dobson hardcover edition from 1977. If we continue on and look at the Ace Book, we can see that it was printed in 1972. If you see no month or date, most likely it's just unspecified. We have an ISBN and catalog ID. The publisher is Ace Books. The price was 75 cents. It's 189 pages and paperback. The cover artist is Carol Thole. This is the first known printing. So now I have the printing history and the cover artist for the edition that I have. I also may have a few facts. It's time now to give a blurb or to try to entice the reader to potentially want to read this book. There are times when I revert to the blurb on the back of the book. For the Barons of Behavior, it goes like this. Ralph Nicholson, psychotherapist to a psyched out world, had discovered a terrible secret. Martin Boyd and his political machine were controlling all of Windham County. Or is that Wyndham? I mispronounce one of my favorite author's names all the time. I know it's not Windham, that it's Wyndham. So is this county Windham or Wyndham? I don't know. Let's go with Wyndham. Martin Boyd and his political machine were controlling all of Wyndham County by playing upon every psych technique in existence. Nicholson had only one way to combat Boyd's machine and incidentally, save his own life. Ralph Nicholson must build a better psychopolitical machine to make the world safe for mankind's collective mind. But Nicholson faced an established monster and his only weapons consisted of his brain, his computer, his wife, and finding the right dark horse candidate to be the puppet on his psychological strings. And while Nicholson searched and computed, Boyd's machine was grinding ever closer to a final printout of mankind's destiny. Blurbs on books is not my preferred favorite in terms of communicating what this book is about. This actually does a pretty good job, but I find that viewers really enjoy my own personal take on the book. Now I've read that blurb to you, but if I was starting it for myself, I might do something like, it's rumored that Russia influenced the 2016 election in the United States. What if someone sought not only to control social media, 
but to try to control the masses themselves by psychology and drugs. So I don't know. How do you like that compared to the blurb on the back of the book? You can always remark in the comments below about some of the things I'm talking about. This book is really all about maneuvering the electorate. Psychology is down to such an art that you can predict how people will behave to certain stimuli and certain drugs. Personality types are reacted to differently. What if a politician tried to populate his constituency with only a certain personality type, one that he can control? This is an extreme type of gerrymandering. Could this politician learn how to manipulate all personality types so that he can be elected, not only in his own constituency, but across the United States? And how could you stop it without reverting to the same techniques? This is a strange novel. To fight an evil, you must use that evil. This is a novel with political and psychological trickery. The political skullduggery includes using plants within opposition rallies and also police forces to make false arrests. Remember, this was written in 1972. You may hear some themes that really ring true today. Perdom brings us through this political and psychological battlefield. Just as the sides are gearing up and meeting, the novel ends. I mean, it feels like it ends five chapters too soon. I kept looking at the last few pages of the novel wondering how he could wrap it up. He didn't. This is the most ambiguous in the middle of a plot ending I've ever seen. Now I hope some of my descriptions have given you a flavor for this book. I haven't talked about the prose, it's very straightforward and clear, and I haven't talked too much about Tom Perdome himself. So I found out that he just passed away in January of this year. Tom Perdome, prolific science fiction writer, music critic, and freelance journalist has died at 87. I wonder if it's Perdome or Perdom. Mr. Perdom was fascinated by science fiction and drawn to writing since his childhood in Connecticut. So there's a little bit about Tom Perdom. There's not a lot in the Encyclopedia for Science Fiction. I know that this novel is his fifth novel and his last novel. He took a break from science fiction and returned to writing short stories in the 90s all the way to his death. There are a lot of well-respected stories in that 30-year span. One of the things that I want to improve is doing some research on the pronunciation of names. My classic mistakes, instead of nuclear, 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 Another one, Windham, 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 Windham. I'm not sure. Is this Perdom, Perdom, Perdom? I think I need to try to find some YouTube videos or interviews at least to see what the pronunciation is. It was of great help when I was looking at Werner Vinge. His last name looks like Vinge, but it's Vinge. Another one that I looked up was Fritz Leiber, not Lieber. Liber. Anyways, once I have some information about the author, perhaps I have some context for the novel itself, then I will go on to a rating for that novel. Not everybody on YouTube likes to have a rating. I can understand that, but I think it's important for you to understand where this novel sits with me. As you watch this channel, you get a feel for what I like and what I don't like. So, for the Barons of Behavior, I find the concept very interesting and very relevant to today. But because of this abrupt in the middle of the novel ending, I was just completely frustrated by it. I give it 5 out of 10. So now that you've heard my rating, you can still consider what I said about the novel and about the author, and perhaps the context. This still might be a novel for you. So I hope you enjoyed this little glimpse into how I review a book. Let me know your thoughts on this process and on this book itself. Until next time, keep reading.